I'm going to share with you the top 16 best pals in pal world. This is going to have good combat pals, utility pals, resource gathers, all sorts of awesome pals for you to pick from. Coming in at number 16 is none other than Fox Parks. Now, this is an unlikely one to have in the list, but Fox Parks is actually really, really good in the early game for one thing that you might not expect. So when you go to technology and you get to level 6, you can get the Fox Parks Harness. And this allows you to hold Fox Parks as an ultimate ability to use a flamethrower. Now, the reason that this is really good is early game, it will allow you to weaken enemies to exactly the HP that you want before capture. But the other reason that you would want it is it's an unlikely way to be able to beat some of the strongest enemies in the game at any level if you actually feel like grinding it out. So what you can do is you can have five Fox Parks in your inventory and use Huggy Fire over and over again on them and fight them like a Dark Souls game. Now because of the tick rate and how frequently it hits every second, it makes it so even though you're doing one damage, it's actually doing a significant amount of damage. So if you would like to, you can actually beat some of the strongest enemies in the game using nothing but five Fox Parks. It's important to note that they can burn the enemies as well, which will make it go even faster since burn does a percentage damage. But do keep in mind that burn procs have diminishing returns. So the more that you burn a boss, the less time, like the less likely you are to be able to burn the boss. If you find yourself wanting a Fox Parks, here are its habitats highlighted in orange. Coming in at number 15 is another simple but good pal, which is T-Fant. Now, this one is only going to be good in the early game, and it's because of one simple thing about this pal, which it has a special ability, which is Soothing Shower. Now, this thing will heal you for 200 HP flat, which makes it terrible late game. But in the early game, when you don't have cold resistant armor, when you don't have heat resistant armor, this thing can make the difference between staying alive when running around and exploring. So for the early game and for new players, this one's actually a really, really good pal. And don't forget that you can have multiple at once and then use the ability over and over and over again, which is really nice when you are freezing to death or burning to death in the desert or in a glacier-like region. Now, if you want a T-Fant, here are its habitats. Have you ever wanted infinite pal spheres or infinite arrows or just some free gold coins? If you wanted any of those things, then you may want number 14 on the list, which is Vixie. Vixie is one of the best early to mid game pals, and I even use it in the late game just to keep a supply of pal spheres. So what you'll do is you'll get a bunch of Vixies and put them in a ranch, and then they'll produce arrows, pal spheres, and some gold coins. The main thing I'm after, though, is the arrows and the pal spheres. So that way, if I ever see a low-level tame, I can throw normal pal spheres at it as much as I want without even having to think about it. If you want to pick up a bunch of Vixies, there's only one area in the entire game that you can find them, and that's right here on the map. Moving up the list, we have our first mount. This one is Dire Howl, coming in at number 13. So this one is an early game mount that's actually decently fast. That's pretty much the only reason it's on the list is because you can get it early and it's pretty fast. Other than that, that's it. That's all Dire Howl really has going for it. Starting at level 9, you can use it and then you can run around on a pretty fast mount and it'll get you anywhere you need to go in the early game. If you want to pick up a Dire Howl, you can find it at these locations. So coming at number 12 is none other than Chicopee. Now, I know what you might be thinking here. Why in the world is Chicopee on this list? And it's pretty simple. Chicopee is a pal in this game that lays eggs when assigned to the ranch. And that's literally the only reason Chicopee is on this list. Because eggs are used in cakes, cakes are used for breeding, and breeding is a huge part of the game. And that's it for Chicopee. If you want to farm up some Chicopees, you can find them at these locations. Now coming in at number 11 is Muzarina, and this one is on here for another simple reason. It makes milk, and milk is used in cakes, and cakes are used for breeding. And that's the only reason Muzarina is on the list. But Muzarina is higher on the list than Chicopee because Muzarina is very slightly better at combat than Chicopee. If you want to catch yourself a Muzarina, you can find it at that location on the map. Moving on to number 10, we have none other than Beegard, or Beegard A, I don't know how to say it. But this one is on here again for another simple reason. This one, when assigned to the ranch, makes honey. And honey plus eggs plus milk plus flour makes cakes. And cakes are used in breeding. But this one's way better than the cow and better than the chicken because this one can actually do combat reasonably well. And this one is a self-destruct ability similar to self-destruct on Pokemon, which makes it kill itself but does an insane amount of damage to a nearby enemy, which is pretty cool. If you want to catch a bee guard, you can find it at this location on the map. Coming in at number 9 on the list is none other than Tombat. 
Now this one's just a good all around pal, but the main thing is that it's one of the first pals you get access to that's actually pretty good at mining, which is really important for leaving out your base at the stone pile and letting it collect stone for you. But Tombat doesn't just stop there. Tombat also has a ton of high damage abilities that it'll unlock and it does a decent amount of damage for a pretty early to get tame. If you want a Tombat, you can only find it at night at the following blue locations on the map. Coming in at number 8 is our first flying mount, and that is Nightwing. Now, Nightwing is on the list for one main reason, which is it's the lowest level flying mount that you can get. And you can get it in some early game areas. Nightwing's not that great though, he's pretty slow and has pretty bad stamina management, but you can fly, which is extremely important to be able to do when it comes to exploring the map because it's gigantic and has a lot of verticality. So that's it for Nightwing. It's literally just that it's the earliest game flying mount that you can get. If you want a Nightwing, you can find it at these locations. Keep in mind it flies kind of high, but if you kill an enemy below it, it'll come down to eat it and that'll be your chance to fight it. Coming in at number seven is none other than Incineram. Now this is another good all-arounder. This one's actually pretty darn good at combat with some decent stats. But also, the good thing about Incineram is its crafting skills. So while Incineram is decent on attack and things, the big thing is you generally have to have at least one pal that has kindling so you can refine ore into ingots. And while you're at it, this one not only has kindling, but has level 2 handiwork, transporting, and level 1 mining. So it's just a really good pal to have around the base if you're going to have a kindling one anyway. And like I said, it's pretty decent at combat. If you want an Incineram, you're going to have to go to a high level area to get it, but you can find them in raids. So sometimes when you're getting raided, Incinerams will be in the group and you can weaken one and catch one like that if you want one. Now moving up to number 6 on the list, we have none other than Van Worm. This is where the list really starts to pivot towards the really, really good pal. So Van Worm is going to be your bread and butter flying mount for most of the mid game all the way into the late game. The reason for that is Van Worm is pretty fast, has pretty good stamina management, and has decent damage, is decent at combat. So Van Worm's really going to carry you as far as flying mounts all the way through the mid game. So you'll be able to unlock the mount or the uh, saddle for Van Worm at level 21. So that's why it's a mid game flying mount. But it will last you all the way until you get into the high 30s or all the way into the 40s as far as levels. So Van Worm is going to be a really good flying mount that I highly recommend getting all the way through the mid game for exploring. If you want a Van Worm, the best place to catch it is in the middle of the map, the small cluster. That's where the lower level ones are. You can catch it on the left side of the map as well, but those ones are going to be much higher level. Moving up even further on the list, coming in at number five is Hell's Effort. This is your next big upgrade for flying mounts after Van Worm. And the reason this is an upgrade because this one is better at combat even still. And this one is even faster than Van Worm by a decent amount. Um, Hell Zephyr is pretty darn fast. You can see right here how fast um, Hell Zephyr is. And again, Hell Zephyr is generally even better at combat with better stats than the Van Worm. So if you want to, starting at level 34, you will make the saddle and the refined ingots you need in order to saddle up a Hell Zephyr. And that will be your mid to late game mount if you want an intermediary step between Van Worm and one of the later mounts we'll see on this list. Hell's Ever can only be found at night in these locations. And now it's time to move sideways a little bit on this list with something that I cannot live without and you should not live without. And number four is none other than Dig Toys. Dig Toys is an insanely critical pal that you'll need in this game because Dig Toys can help you mine. Starting at level 19, you will put a saddle on it and make do this crazy spin attack where it'll just obliterate one or two ores depending how close they are to one another. And it is one of the best ways in the game to gather ore. So in order to use it, you just go ahead and throw it out at an ore pile and then it'll just start mining. Now that was a special move that I was using right there, but even its normal mining is insanely fast. So you'll use him while, you'll sim while you simultaneously use a pickaxe and you'll be able to mine significantly faster. I cannot imagine getting ore without using a dig toys. You can find dig toys at the desert in the middle of the map. That's the best place to get one if you want one. And don't forget, it's not limited to ore. It can help you get sulfur. It can help you get coal. And it can help you get quartz as well. And now coming in at number three on the list, you know him, you love him, you can't live without him, it's Ichthadir. This thing is one of the best all-around universal mounts that you'll use from very early on, starting around level 
I think 12 or something you can use them and saddle them up, all the way until very, very late in the game. There aren't really any ground mounts faster than him. The main thing is when you're running, you can use the antler uppercut to cover a ton of ground super, super fast. So not only is it a good speed to begin with as a base speed, but spamming antler uppercut will get you across the map faster than just about anything for the first 40 or so levels of the game. So Ichthyr is definitely one of the top mounts in the entire game. On top of that, when you use him at the base, he can do lumbering and gather trees for you. So that's another good use for him as well. You can find Ichthyr at these locations on the map. And now we're getting down to the final two, two of the greatest pals that you'll be able to play with in this entire game. So coming in at number two is none other than Beacon. This one is actually a boss that you can get around level 30. You'll actually see it on the map. It is right over here. And if you can catch this one, it is well worth it because Beacon is extremely fast with decent stamina management, not the greatest stamina management, but it is insanely fast for a flying mount. And so even though Ichthyr is fast, just because of the verticality, uh, Beacon can outdo Ichthyr generally speaking. And Beacon is like, if, if you ever get swift on a Beacon, it's basically gonna be faster than Ichthyr. And on top of that, Beacon has some really good combat abilities and can do a lot of damage. So Beacon is just a really, really good mount. Generally better than Ichthyr if, again, if you get swift on it. And it's just, it's just good. It's a really, really good mount. You can get it in the mid game. And I highly recommend getting a Beacon to hold you over until around level 40. And now it's the moment you've been waiting for. We are down to number one. This is the best pal that I have on the list for you today. This one can be found at level 40. You can actually find it as a boss, which makes it gigantic, which actually backs backfires because his hitbox is already enormous to begin with. But number one is none other than the one, the only, Suzaku. Suzaku is amazing. This is quite possibly the best pal in the entire game. So what makes Suzaku so good is first off, Suzaku is very, very good at combat. Does a ton of damage has a lot of really good abilities, and is pretty tanky on top of that. But it doesn't end there. Suzaku is actually very, very fast for a flying mount. Not as fast as Beacon, but still very, very fast. And what makes Suzaku really, truly the best flying mount and probably best mount in the game is Suzaku's stamina management is insane. You can sprint while flying, and still fly for an insane amount of time. But if you don't want to sprint while flying, you can basically fly forever. I mean, not really forever, but it sure feels like forever. So when it comes to exploring the map, fighting the enemies that you see while riding on the back of Suzaku, and just doing anything that you need to do in this game, Suzaku is second to none. This mount is actually the best that I have been able to get my hands on so far, but you won't be able to mount up a Suzaku until level 40, because that is when you unlock the saddle for Suzaku here at level 40. But once you get there, it is an amazing mount to have, and it is a super good end game flying mount. If you want to catch yourself a Suzaku, there's only one place in the map you can find it over at the top right. It's like a desert area. You can also find coal up there, by the way, in case you didn't know where coal was. That's where to find Suzaku. And that about wraps it up for my top 16 best pals right now. So you might be wondering, why not this one? Why not that one? Why not some of the crazy late game boss ones? And the simple answer to that is the game's only been out for about four days and I've only had enough time to capture about 70% of the pals. So I haven't had time to use literally everything just yet. So this is the best of what I've had available to me yet. I've explored a lot. I've tried to find everything I could and test everything I can so far. But if you want to see an updated list with every single pal included with the absolute best of the best late game end game pals level 50 bosses whatever is truly truly the best if that's what you want to see then you're gonna have to stay tuned for part two but it's been part one of the best pals in pal worlds i hope you guys enjoyed now you have a better idea of some of the best pals you can get in pal world